back to the channel and today I just want to talk about my top fit 36 gallon Bowfront Aquarium and what it's been like having it set up for a year now. So I couldn't help but notice recently that there's a lot of interest in the 36 gallon Bowfront Aquarium sort of kit from Top Fin and specifically my setup. It seems like a lot of people are interested in it, um, just judging by the unboxing video and the setup video I've done uh, for this thing and the uh, review of it, the overview I did of this. Uh, it seems like a lot of people are interested in this tank and want to learn more about it. It seems like it's something uh, that a lot of people are interested in, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, when you're going for a kit like this, you, that can easily be had for like $120, a 30 six gallon kit which comes with um everything you need sort of we'll get into what i replaced and what i kept from that actual kit and it's of a approachable size it's not huge but it's also not a small tank like you know this is a pretty large tank it's deceptively large in person like it it looks pretty sizable and that's nice you have a little bit of a wider variety of stocking options it has this cool bow front look and uh it just it's really an appealing tank to a lot of people it seems and that makes a lot of sense because i do really like it and i'm excited to give you guys a full one year in-depth review of how this setup has progressed and how the kit has held up over time so let's get started with the actual tank itself so this is the top fin uh, 36 gallon bowfront aquarium kit that can be had at pet smarts everywhere uh and I mean, I bought this uh, just a little more than a year ago. It has been set up for just about a year. Can't be exact here, but you know, sounds better in the title or thumbnail. It's probably around 11 and a half months or something like that. But I have had this tank for over a year now. But I gotta say, it's held up really well. Um, there had, was some, some concern for me when I was buying it that like the silicone wouldn't be great at the, in that uh, the, the glass might crack or just some, you know, thing that just shouldn't happen with the tank, especially not with a big tank. Because when I bought this, this is the biggest tank I'd ever had. And uh, of course I've got 55 gallon now and stuff. But when I first bought this thing, I was kind of scared. Like it's $120, comes with all this stuff. Is this just kind of, is this gonna be some shoddy craftsmanship? I don't really know. Is this a risky move to buy this? Am I um, making a risk buying cheap here? And I guess not. Um, the kit actually came with a lot of things that I, that I liked. Um, I'll tell you what I'm still using from that kit uh, later in the video. But um, came with a lot of stuff I liked. I outfitted it with a couple things um, that just sort of improved it and I would recommend most people to do if they want to set up a planted tank in this thing or just something similar uh, for this tank. But the actual tank itself is held up great. I think it's a really nice form factor. Uh, the 36 gallon size is really nice. It's tall, it's pretty deep, so good for aquascaping. And it's got this really cool bow front that's just a nice centerpiece to really anywhere. It looks great in my fish room and I really love it. And I've loved having it set up for the years the year. So what do I still have on this tank that came with it originally? So really I just have the tank and the filter. So the top fin PF40 filter is what it came with in the kit and I've still got that running on here. And it's actually a great filter. Uh, completely quiet. Uh, it has a little bit of trouble getting started up sometimes. Like I have to do a water change. You have to make sure you get some good amount of water in there or else it won't start up. But um, I've got that still running on there uh, on this side right here. And it does have adjustable flow. I can turn it up, turn it down whenever I want. I usually have it turned a little bit down because it does splash just because the water level gets down low. And one thing I like about this tank is that it is actually rimless. As you can see, all the Tetris following. Um, but it is rimless. Uh, it comes with a lid, a black lid, uh, with that, you know, sort of fits all this stuff as a kit. And that's the first thing I would recommend not using from the kit. Uh, the lid is just, it's such cheap plastic. The light is pretty bad. I mean, if you weren't going for a planted tank or maybe you just wanted to do some Anubias, it might work. But I just really wouldn't recommend it. Uh, this uh, tank right now is outfitted with like a $36 Nikru RGB light and it has served me well for the year I've had this thing set up. Never had any problems with it. Uh, I'll put a link to that one in the description. And um, so I definitely would recommend upgrading the light um, specifically to this one because I can attest that it's nice. Um, I did raise the light up a little bit. Um, I just sort of bent the bracket so that it has this sort of raised look to kind of keep the light down a little low because I'm not growing any super high light plants in this tank. But I didn't change that, don't have the original lid or um, light on it. But I do kind of like not having a lid. I, it proposed some problems for me. Uh, well, I've had this set up, like when I had angelfish, I did have one jump out. I've had a couple fish that have been in here in the past jump out just because I don't have a lid. But it does give you that cool rimless look that a lot of people like. And again, only for $120 with this whole kit here. It also came with a heater, which I did not use. I do have a heater in this tank, but it's a Aquion heater. The top fin heater, I mean, I don't know what they're thinking. It's silver, it sticks out like a sore thumb. It's pretty ugly. I can't attest to whether or not it works very well, but it was just thrown in there. I think they could have just not put that in there, or at least used the money they used putting the heater in there to upgrade the lighting or something. But I uh, got rid of the heater. I just have a relatively cheap Aquion one in here. 
just an adjustable Aquaion heater. I got it for like 20 bucks at Petco. No problem with that. Got that in here now. Would not recommend um, uh, just using the stock heater. It's just ugly. Don't know how well it works. And you can get a nice black heater that blends in with a black background that I painted on here. Just spray paint. Helps all the equipment blend in really well. Uh, and it blends right in there. And it works probably better than that top fin heater would have. It's a, it was a really cheap heater anyway. And it was, it was honestly really ugly. Now, the only other equipment I've added to this tank is uh, I have a secondary filter on this side just because I didn't feel like I was getting enough water movement and there was sort of uh, surface film developing every once in a while and this filter had a bit of a skimmer on it. So it was just a $9.99 filter I got off Amazon, some really cheap uh, off-brand filter. I don't know if I can find the link, but if I can, I'll throw it in the description. Just some really cheap off-brand filter and I put it on this side, so I've got dual hang back filters right here. Uh, personally, I think if you crank the water flow on this thing all the way up, perfectly adequate for a tank like this but without a lid um it does evaporate pretty quickly so that was just a little too inconvenient for me having a bunch of other tanks who just didn't really work out properly so i added another filter here keeps our water movement happening really nicely sort of because there was a big dead zone like this entire side of the tank getting some uh mold build up and stuff especially in this moss and so i just threw another hang on back filter on there and i haven't had problems with that so um Although you don't have to, I would recommend considering adding another filter in here. I haven't had this filter on here the whole setup, maybe only a couple months ago I added it, but it definitely has improved uh, just everything about this tank and ease of maintenance. I have to do less water changes now that mold doesn't build up right here, and uh, honestly, I'm in, I don't. I used to do water changes like 50% on this tank, like once a week. Now I do like a like a maybe a 25% every other week. So things have really settled into a nice groove in this tank. Speaking of which, let's talk about the scape. So I set this tank up with uh, a ton of uh, nutrients in the substrate, and that has lasted me a year. Uh, it doesn't seem like the nutrients are depleted that much, um, but certainly other plants have done well and some plants haven't. So in the substrate, let's see if I can remember, I've got uh, some potting soil down there. I've got some fluval stratum, carob seed, eco complete, and just stuff like that. A ton of stuff, all capped with some nice sand. I've got some woodscape in here. It's not an amazing aquascape. <laughs> I mean, it's grown in really nicely, but if I was scaping it right now, I bet I could do something better in here. But I don't plan on rescaping it. Uh, it's just, it's gotten into a nice groove, and I really like how this tank looks. I just can't imagine rescaping it, at least not in the re near future. But if it really starts going downhill, maybe I'll rescape it. But so the main plants I have in here, I've got a lot of this Rotala Indica, sort of overtaking the mid-ground, which is fine with me. Uh, this Cryptocorn Tropica and Wenti uh, has done really well in here. This is the best uh, and biggest crypts I've grown before. But for Crypt Wenti and Tropica, uh, these guys have done really well in this tank. Just nice along the foreground. They're getting a little big for the foreground. I probably should have put them more mid-ground, but you know. Um, I've got a lot of nice Anubias Butteri and Anubias species up here in the background. I think that looks really cool. Um, I experimented with some different plants in here uh, when I first started it up. I had a Madagascar lace in this corner and, and a big upon Geet Nulvasius, like a huge one. It looked awesome in here. Um, but both of them being bold plants, they had a temporary lifespan. They didn't really last too long and they actually died out and I replaced them. I think things look really good in here even without them. And this big kind of star of the show plant right here, Cryptocorn Chris Gelada. I got this whole plant uh, a couple months ago. Had it, I got it for like $8, it was a really great deal at a local fish store, and it's just, it's growing really well, I've sent out a couple pups, I trimmed off the one that was here, we planted it back there, it looks really good, fills out this sort of void here, and covers up the equipment even better, uh, so I think that that's an awesome plant, and I think if you're going to do a big planted tank like I've done here, this is a really cool plant for it. Cryptocorn Chris Gelada, I believe it is. Then I've also got a red tiger lotus still in here, and it's still in there, it's just hidden by the Rotala. And I'm planning on moving into a different tank just because it is getting overshadowed here, but it's still growing uh, amazingly after a year. I was kind of surprised that it didn't just get outshaded. It's not really growing like it was, it just doesn't get as much light. But I've just sort of decided to phase this plant out. I'm going to move it to a different setup uh, eventually. But other than that, it's just a lot of stem plants. I've got some uh, Lunafila sessila flora in here too. Lots of Anubiuses. I've got some Christmas moss on this wood that I recently trimmed, just the back, because it grows really well in this tank and just miscellaneous crypts and stuff throughout here. So it's a very easy plant to tank, lots of very easy plants to grow, but I think it worked out really well. I think the scape looks good, it's grown in phenomenally in my opinion, and I think it looks really good for a long-term plant to tank that's been set up for a year. I believe this is my longest running tank, uh, certainly the one that I have now, but maybe that I've ever done. So now let's talk about fish. So this tank has gone through a couple cycles of fish, but the one thing that has stayed consistent is the Serpe Tetras. I love Serpe Tetras. In this tank, I think they're awesome. Bigger body tetra, that awesome red color, especially once they get a little mature. Some of them have like a long fin gene, like this one right here, um, which is kind of interesting. So it might have been just someone's failed long fin 
uh, strain that they sent in. But I do have a couple that have a bit of a long fin. But these are, I think I've got 12 or 13 Sope Tetras in here. I don't know, maybe I've lost one over the year that I've had them in here. But nothing crazy. I had a trio of angelfish in here as well when I set it up. Those were awesome fish, I loved having them in here. But I ended up having issues with one jumping out and then that sort of offset the balance. It was some fighting and issues, so I ended up giving those guys away. Um, so they're with a different home right now and the fact they're still doing really well. Um, I get the guy to send me some pictures of them every once in a while and they're still doing great, so that's nice. But without a centerpiece fish, I tried some Epistogramma in here. Uh, I've got really hard water, the Epistos wanted softer water and over the past couple months they died off. And I've got some black neons in here now. This is a newer edition, and I probably wouldn't have put these in here um, if I was uh, had a different option. But I broke down my 20 gallon long recently to escape it. You guys will see that later. But I need a place to put my black neons, and I just decided that 36 gallon was would be a good option for them. And honestly, it has been. They are not being bothered by the serpe tetras. The serpe tetras aren't uh, any issue to them. Uh, that was one thing I was worried about. Like maybe they're gonna nip. But it doesn't seem to be a big problem at all. The black neons, I mean, they all school together. You know, they come up for food and stuff all together. I think they look kind of good, you know. They sort of keep their own, mind their own business. They stay in different areas of the tank. And these guys stay in their own school. These guys stay in their own school. I think I've got like maybe 20 black neons in here. I don't know. Um, it's kind of more than I'd want. More fish than I'd want in this tank. But, you know, that's just kind of how it is. I uh, don't know if I'll keep them in here forever. But I, for now, they'll be living in here. And I also have some... I think two albino uh, bristlenose pleco, long fin bristlenose plecos, those guys are awesome. I see those guys really often compared to my clown pleco, which is actually the first fish I had in here. Uh, he's still in here, he's gotten really big, like he's really chunky, he looks really good, he's a super healthy, healthy pleco. I just never see him, like it's very rare to see him. Um, I have a couple pictures whenever he does come out, but I've got a clown pleco, two bristlenose, uh, long fin bristlenose in here, and then my tetras, and... Um, if I ever add anything else to the tank, I will probably remove maybe probably the black neons because the serpe tetras just look so good in this tank. Black neons look cool too, but I like the serpe tetras a little more. But if I ever add anything else in here, I'll probably remove the black neons, keep the serpes. Let me know what you guys think about the black neons in here, uh, how you feel about that. I think they look pretty good. Um, I wouldn't have done it myself, but you know, it's kind of nice. I think they look cool and I like how the schools interact with each other. Other than that, that's my 36 gallon aquarium, one year overview. Everything's gone really well. I would recommend this aquarium kit to anybody who's a beginner who wants to try out a bit bigger of a tank than just like a 10 gallon. And uh, it's a really great value for your money if you are willing to upgrade a couple parts with just some cheap Amazon uh, things. You can just throw a nicer light on here, uh, another filter, and then get this thing nicely planted and you've got yourself a great tank to start off with or to have as a seasoned hobbyist. So I think this is a really cool tank. I recommend it uh, to most people. Uh, you can buy it at PetSmart's anywhere, I guess. Wait for a sale, you can get this thing for 120 bucks. I've heard people getting it as low as $90 for the kit. So, hey, wh why not? You can also buy it just as the tank. And, I mean, that's just fine. You don't have to buy the kit because, honestly, all I really wanted from the kit was the tank and the filter. So, uh, use that information as you will. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.